Hello there and welcome back to the Squirrelhead YouTube channel once again. Um, I've got a fan on because for some reason up in the realms of Cumbria it's decided to be really humid today. So I've got my fan on, apologies if you can hear that and it's distracting but here we are for hopefully what will be a quick transfer talk where I will, you know, make a point of saying that I think as, as Liverpool Football Club um, we're going to have to get used to uh, missing out on targets now um, because we keep being linked to loads of different targets and we, you know, they break down within a couple of days. Uh, I think I'm going to start right off the bat by saying I think the main key thing that we need to do this year, uh, this summer even, is to try and try as hard as we can to keep all of our current players, pretty much all of them, um, which for me, again, it, I don't want to see him go anyway, but the likes of Ben Teke, can't be getting rid of him in case the in injuries strike again like they did this year. Um, keeping hold of Coutinho is vital as much as I think he's got so much more to him and he just needs to show up in the bigger games. You still need to keep hold of him. I don't want to see any of them go to a rival. Um, but we'll kick it off with um, Anwar El Ghazi from Ajax who we are believed to have apparently a couple of rivals to. Now, I didn't know until today that we were linked with Anwar El Ghazi, um, but apparently we're not to be worried too much because uh, the people that are linked with him are Crystal Palace and recently relegated Aston Villa, who wanted to sign the 21-year-old. Now, obviously, Aston Villa, as it says, uh, recently relegated. They're going to struggle to get someone of that type of quality. Um, he does have quite a lot of good qualities, obviously he's got a good eye for goal, um, he reached double figures for Ajax, but as we've seen in the past when Dutch players, like, not Dutch players, players that come from the Eredivisie, come from the Dutch league, they don't always settle straight away, obviously we've got the dream story of the last player we got that came from Ajax, which was Luis Suarez, um, I don't think we're going to ever get that sort of thing ever again, but I like reading stuff where it says, a six foot two wide man. Now, obviously, six foot two—that's pretty damn big for a wide man who loves running at defenders. Has a combination of pace and strength, which makes him difficult to stop. And he can use either foot arriving late into the box. Now, that sounds absolutely great. That sounds wonderful. As long as we're not going to end up doing something like we're going to rely on just him to be our focal. Like this is going to be the one thing that we're going to get this inexperienced guy in like a Premier League sort of uh, setting. Obviously experience with Ajax, would I like to see it go ahead? I think I think with Liverpool, I would like to see any deal go ahead at the moment. I think I'm pretty much willing to accept anybody that has potential, as it looks like we're mainly going for, you know, youth type players. Um, you know, people that are under the ages of like 23, 22, under that age bracket we're looking to get in. Um, what could he contribute on just reading this? As I say, earlier videos, I don't go out and actively watch um, YouTube videos because you end up disappointed afterwards sometimes. Um, what could he bring? He could bring a lot of what we didn't have all of last season. Um, we would have had it if we'd have kept around Lazar Markovic. We would have been able to have the opportunity to have a winger who has a lot of pace, runs at defenders, can strike a ball quite well if you give him the opportunity. Um, that's what he would bring to us as well. Now, if we ended up having two of them, you have Markovic come back off loan from Fenerbahce, and you have this guy, Anwar Al Ghazi, come in, another young guy, probably about the same age, I think. Markovic comes back to us, I think he's 20, 21. That can only be a good thing. Setting up the strike force that we'll have with Danny Ings, um, with Sturridge, with Benteke. Everyone that we've got in there, Origi, of course, cannot forget Origi. The potential that we've got there, unbelievable, unbelievable, and get that pace on the wings to be able to provide, and then we're not actually relying on the centre of the park to create all of our chances, we can start to spread it out wide, we can start either playing it through the middle, crosses can start to come back in, and that's where you could see Ben Teke become a focal point again, and Origi, and Sturridge. This is, you know, it, it could make sense to do something like that. I would definitely take him into our squad. Um, I don't know what the fee, there's no quoted fee that I can see. Um, but yes, no, definitely I would take anybody with that sort of potential. Now, the next one that I've seen here 
is um, the next one I've seen here is that Coutinho has apparently been encouraged to leave. Um, now, obviously, the article starts off with the fact that apart from you know Loris Carrios, we've been fairly quiet in terms of transfer activities. But apparently, we're going to be looking at shedding some dead wood and retaining some key names. The latter is a very persistent rumor. This is obviously Coutinho. I covered it in one of the last videos. How it really annoys me, pisses me off when this sort of thing comes up when he's making off the fly, off the cuff uh, comments. Um, now it looks like, as as we already know, I accepted it a couple of uh, you know a couple of weeks ago that after we lost the Europa League final, lost our place in the Champions League by that point as well. Well, we lost it well in the league, and we obviously lost it by not winning the, the final. We were going to lose out on getting Mario Gert, uh, someone who's a very good caliber player, needs to be given more of a chance. Um, so then we need to rely on keeping our midfield together. Obviously, there's rumours filled in ev every day of uh, Coutinho's things, and this seemed to be a, a problem with us when we stopped, when, when we weren't as competitive in the league after the, um, you know, the 12-13 season when Suarez was wanting to leave and stuff like that. And whenever they would go out onto like. Uh, international football and stuff like that all these rumors would start flying around then they come back to the club and they're like oh no I'm all great it's fine it's not a problem I'm yeah yeah that's cool thank you very much and then they go back out on international duty it's like no 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 I don't like being there I don't like being there as long as he doesn't friggin bite someone then all right but you know we definitely need to yeah, it was a gut-wrenching loss uh, to Sevilla, supporting, uh, but it was arguably, it, it was just, I just don't want to see, especially, especially Coutinho to PSG, because I could actually see Coutinho slotting in a, like, a side like Barcelona, he's never going to dislodge anybody like Iniesta, but Iniesta's like 32, I believe, so Iniesta's not... He's not the uh, youngest, he's still one of the greatest midfielders right now in the world. He's, he's, he's absolute world class, no doubt. But he's young enough, Coutinho, that he can come in there, learn their style of play. Um, and I think he'd actually fit in really well. Going to PSG would seem like a bit of a waste, but if he's just wanting to win trophies, then fair enough. Um, but no, I just... I can't believe he's been encouraged to leave, though, as well. So it actually seems that like it's come out from Danny Alves. Um, saying that Liverpool have history but you should consider playing for top U U uh, UCL sides. He has the quality to play for Barcelona, exactly what I was just saying. Um, and he's right, and I said that the other day, yeah we, we have history but what are we doing right now? We're standing still, obviously we've got good pedigree manager with Jurgen Klopp, one of the best in the world and definitely one of the best in the Premier League. We're going to have a really hard struggle up against Mourinho, uh, Pep Guardiola and all like, all those guys. Um, Wenger, who stays always up there, thereabouts. Ranieri as well, good good caliber manager. I do believe that we will struggle, but to be encouraged to leave by someone who doesn't even know, doesn't know our club, he doesn't never played for our club, it's just annoying, really is annoying. Um, and I don't want this to be one of these all summer things that keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Because I guarantee I won't be talking about it every single day. The next thing is uh, things about Jonas Hector. Now I was seeing this briefly on Twitter um, that apparently we are we are not um, interested in signing Jonas Hector. So you know there's conflicting reports now of whether you know apparently we've some saying that we have agreed a fee, while others declare that Klopp's interest in the player has cooled, and that other avenues have been explored, which we will certainly come on to now that I look at this article up here. Now apparently we're targeting Kieran Gibbs, which this is the exact face that I made when I first saw that headline. Now you can totally see why I would make that face. Kieran Gibbs doesn't strike me as one of those guys that's like, oh yeah, oh man, he's the absolute game changer. Kieran Gibbs is one of those people that strikes me as like, isn't, hasn't he always been injured a lot? And that picture sums up what I what I've really seen of Kieran Gibbs. It's like, isn't he just like always injured? You know, basically it'd be like we would be getting him because Wenger doesn't need him anymore. And is that really the type of player that we should be going for? Well, as I said before, I would pretty much take anybody. So yeah, I probably would take him. But 12 million? I mean, we spent 12 million on Daniel Sturridge. Now that's you know, quite good, take away his injuries and stuff like that. He spent 8 million on getting Coutinho. Bargain. And you look at what Coutinho's like, 
12 million on someone like Kieran Gibbs, 26 years old. <sighs> Not one that I would be excited about, but if we're talking about replacing Alberto Moreno, or what I would certainly do is Moreno, turn him into a winger. Turn him into a winger, and he'll be good. I almost guarantee it, he would be good as a winger. Um, but if we're replacing him with Kieran Gibbs, I'm not dissatisfied with it. I just not. It's not. And it's, it's not like if that ends up being our biggest signing of the summer, nah, doesn't really fill you with a lot of excitement, does it? Really. But that's just my quick thoughts on that one, anyway. Okay, so basically, it looks like we're gonna get knocked back by pretty much everybody. It's. Uh, you know, we're going to get knocked back by loads of players. We're probably going to have to bring in quite... Basically do like what we did last year. We'll end up bringing in maybe a couple of prospects. Maybe one splash out on... I don't know who. I, I really don't know who. What are your thoughts? Who, who who would we bring in? Who could we bring in? That could be like a marquee type signing. Because it seems that everybody else is going to be going on to other clubs. Bigger clubs that have maybe got... Uh, a lot more going on like the Champions League or even Europa League because we're not even in that this year um, and it does look like we're going to be going for like young prospects and maybe experienced people that are not doing it at their current clubs is that disappointing? a little bit but should we really be expecting more right now? no not at all because we haven't been doing it history gets you, gets you only so far and then we have to actually start making history again and we haven't been doing that for a long, long, long time. And you start to slip down. This is obviously probably what under Louis van Gaal, that like the likes of Man United were worried about. If they were going to continue like having a bit of a slip, if they were going to continue having a bit of a slide, that you end up doing like what happens to us. But since winning the Champions League in 2005, what have we really been able to do? We've had some really great players. We got to second in the league, I think, twice since then. Um, most notably, I think 2009 with the Torres and Gerard partnership, and then obviously the 2013-14 season, which was unreal. Um, since then, I mean, uh, you know, apart from those two, what have we done that warrants us being able to just go out and just be like, Goethe, yeah, we're going to get a World Cup winner, like, who scored the World Cup winning goal against Argentina. Yeah, no, no, we'll snap him up, no problem, no problem at all. No, we've got to, you know, we've got to start being realistic, and we've actually really got to get behind the manager, big time, big time. None of this, like, you know, we, you have to really realise who we have in our club right now with Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, we haven't really made a great. I think we actually finished worse in the league uh, this year uh, under Klopp, but I, I, that doesn't worry me because I know I know what he's. We all know what he's capable of, what he's done with Dortmund and stuff like that. Completely different league, but still, the achievements are there. We know what he's capable of. We need to get behind him, big time. None of this, like, clop out like we did with Rodgers out and stuff like that. You back them until it is literally impossible to do so. And you've got to make... We have to make sure that we back every decision he makes. If he's bringing in young players, there's a vision. There has to be a vision. He's not just going to bring people in just to just to fill up um, shirt numbers and stuff like that. He's not going to do that. We need to get behind everything that he's going to be doing and stop expecting instant ex success because we're not going to get it. That's what every Liverpool fan needs to, to, to really get their heads around. You know, even if you've been a, if you've been a fan or alive since you know the glory days of the 70s and the 80s and stuff like that, and you're expecting all these different types of things that we should be doing, you, you're only going to be disappointed. I would say, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Expecting us just to be going, well, we're Liverpool Football Club, but why aren't we in the top four? Why aren't we challenging for the title? You need to get out of that mentality pretty damn quickly otherwise you're going to be disappointed by everything that happens in the next couple of years and we have to enjoy what that man there can do with young players we've seen it glimpses of it this year what he can do in terms of look at those look at those Europa League games that were you know they looked impossible the Dortmund game 
They looked impossible for us and we saw the quality that our team has and if you can do that on a consistent basis with a full transfer window, I have full belief that we can kick on and do well, but I will not be predicting more than a top five finish. No way. Top four at the very maximum that we could do. But then you have to look at who's going to drop out of that to allow for us to come in. No idea. That's another video for another time. If you've enjoyed what I've been talking about today, it doesn't sound the most positive, but it's going to be like this for the rest of the summer. We'll get linked with everybody and we are going to be disappointed at times. But if you enjoy what I'm doing with the Transfer Talk series, please drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you later.